So far, I've only talked about the positive sides of AI, but AI developments have also been a source of controversy. Let's look at some of the issues raised. One of the greatest fears is that AI could be used in unethical ways to identify and discriminate against people on the basis of race, age, or religion. Or that it could gauge our emotions to let advertisers know what we're in the mood for. Most major AI developers, including Huawei, have adopted or are working on ethical principles to ensure that their technologies aren't used to cause harm. Even so, when an AI is sorting through data, its algorithms can sometimes unintentionally learn to discriminate on the basis of gender or race. Actually, this can happen even when race and gender are removed from the raw data because AI can learn to discriminate using proxies, much like humans do. This can lead to unfair outcomes if an AI is used to support decision-making. To prevent algorithmic bias, AI developers can periodically audit for biases in the decisions that their algorithms make. They can also review their data sets to make sure that it's not skewed machine learning data that's causing the AI to acquire biases. Another controversy with AI is the ability of the technology to potentially identify and track people who hadn't agreed to disclose their personal information. AI-enabled products, like smartphones or smart cars, for example, are equipped with numerous sensors and cameras that are designed to collect data. Even when the information is collated anonymously, an AI fed with enough data can sometimes de-anonymize users. It could possibly figure out personal details like gender, age, religion, or tastes that users hadn't agreed to disclose. ICT companies like Huawei are taking measures to respect user privacy. One approach is federated learning. In federated learning, AI algorithms are trained by using data sourced from multiple decentralized network edge devices. This approach contrasts with centralized machine learning where all data sets are uploaded to a main training server. By limiting the quantity of data put together, federated learning reduces the likelihood of de-anonymization. Seeing is believing, right? Or is it? A type of AI called Generative Adversarial Network, or GAN, enables machines to perform better at image analytics or image translation. In medicine, it helps to detect tumors, or it can convert satellite photos into maps. But GAN is also being used to create extremely realistic deep fakes. Video sharing platforms like YouTube already have several videos of famous figures like Obama or Tom Cruise saying or doing things that they never actually said or did. Deep fakes can be very entertaining, but obviously they can also be misused for ill intent. Another concern is that AI might take over people's jobs. It's an understandable concern, but most AI experts believe that the fear is overblown. Humans have always been looking for ways to be more productive. The invention of the wheelbarrow, the steam engine, or the laptop computer didn't result in massive unemployment. AI will primarily replace jobs that are repetitive, boring, and don't involve complex human interactions. And it will boost human productivity where it's sorely needed in areas like healthcare or quality control. AI isn't able to take the place of humans where creativity or emotional intelligence are required. Writers, software engineers, and managers are a long way from being replaced by AI. This said, and I'm sure some of you already know this, AI has successfully been used in fiction writing. GPTN, a series of natural language processing packages, can churn out new paragraphs in a novel based on a few sentences setting the tone. Writers who have used the technology see it more as a complement to their work than a threat, but it gives rise to a new set of issues. For example, should the software company that created the AI share the authorship rights? 
As you can see from the controversies I just described, the challenges in future AI developments aren't always technological. They're also legal and ethical. And we also need to accept, as societies, that AI in the future will perform some jobs that are now done by humans. In many deployment scenarios, it's already happening. That's it for this part. In our next and last episode, we'll look at the future prospects for AI development.